Since the dawn of time, man has been curious. And for almost as long, the Vibes Broadcast Network has sought the truth. Investigate. Discuss. Explore. Okay. Maybe in other episodes, but this one is just... Listen to the Vibes. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm very privileged to have Brimstone here with me. And we're going to talk a little bit about him and uh, maybe get a little bit into his career in wrestling. Uh, but mostly I want to talk about the music and the comics and all the other good things that you're into. So tell us a little bit about you. First and foremost, Kyle, my friend, I want to say finally Brimstone has made it to listen to the vibes here right now. You are out there in Austin. I'm here in New York. We're going to kill it today, brother. Early, early a.m., but we're making it happen. That's all I got to say. Got coffee, got life in us. That's it. That's it. We're ready to go. That's me. I (laughs) I got my coffee, and I'm good to go. Perfect. So about me, I mean, listen, there's – I'm kind of an open book. So what do you call it? I've been around for a long time. I started my career in entertainment as a child actor uh, on Sesame Street, Rompa Room, you know, some big children's television shows. And, um, you know, I, I never really stopped. I guess I got the taste of, of uh, entertainment in my blood then. And then um, it's just never, never ended. I, I grew up uh, here in New York on Long Island. And uh, what do you call it? My parents were divorced. Uh, you know, when, when I was young. So I had the best and worst of both worlds. So, you know, like um, my, my mother uh, lived, I lived with my mother in Uniondale, New York, famous Nassau Coliseum, um, what do you call it? But, you know, it's a lower middle-class neighborhood. And Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? But my father, you know, had moved to Dix Hills, New York, which is a very rich, wealthy, you know what I mean? uh, Area. So I lived in Uniondale for most of the time. And then every other week and on Wednesdays, I'd head over to my father's. So I, I think that, that, you know, the juxtaposition between the two um, of having the best and the worst and experiencing a little bit of everything kind of made me the way I am today, you know, where mm-hmm. I kind of respect everybody. Um, I love everybody. I just, you know, I've, I've witnessed a lot of different things. So, you know, I'm, I'm very well-versed. Uh, in terms of just the world in general. And, um, you know, I, I've learned to just be good to people. As you and I have had yeah. a conversation before we even got on, right. just be good to one another type of a thing. So, um, you know, now, uh, years later, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I mean, I've, I, you know, had a, a long career in music as a drummer. Um, you know, I then toured the world as a pro wrestler, um, obviously under the stage name Brimstone. I've been Brimstone for well over 20 years. I'm a comic book character, an animated character, kids book character. I do voice work uh, for a lot of different cartoons and, and video games and commercials and stuff like that. I also do the Grindhouse Radio on iHeartRadio and 30 other networks there um, and a bunch of other shows. I just do a little bit of everything um, because I'm the guy who has always said, if you love it and you want it to happen or you want to put it out into the world, make it happen, put it out mm-hmm. into the world. So I always grab the bull by the horn. See, I went Texas on you. There there um, you go. <laughs> Longhorns. You know, I, I grab, grab the bull by the horns and just make it happen. And, and uh, you know what? Sometimes you fail, but I wear failure as a badge of honor because I take those failures and I learn from them, take two steps back to take another 10 steps forward. So um, for me, that's just my MO. So that's a little bit about me. Um, hopefully that, that gives a little bit of an answer. <laughs> you know, just kind of tell how old that Sesame Street is. It's it actually started the year before I was born. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> crazy. Um, I you know, I was on and I believe in 79. Um, so what do you call it? It's just nuts. And I was born in 74. And um, yeah, like just first of all, it just blows my mind how Sesame Street's still on. And still, you know, like very well loved and well accepted. Um, and it and it's just it's such a, a beautiful show. Um, all my kids watched it growing up, and um, it was funny because I hadn't seen 
a lot of people that I was, you know, on screen with uh, for many, many, many years. And um, I wound up uh, years later, you know, I guess within the last 10 years um, at different uh, comic book conventions while signing, um, meeting up with, you know, different people that I had been on screen with and on set with when I was a kid. Uh, one of them was Carol Spinney, uh, who played Big Bird and Oscar. Um, and then we were able to rekindle and, and create a friendship out of that. Um, and what do you call it? We did a couple of little, uh, a couple of tour dates together and um, just such a sweet man, kind soul. And uh, what do you call it? It was just so cool to be able to reconnect with him. The last time I'd seen him, I was like five. You know what I mean? Wow. So, so, you know, um, and, and it was funny too, because the, uh, the promoter at the convention that we connected at uh, was great Philadelphia Comic Con and um, Chris, big guy, great heart, uh, fantastic promoter. He um, he said he goes Brim. You know, every once in a while he'll ask me. You know, you know if uh, I would mind. You know, aside from signing, if I can moderate, like guest guest moderate a couple of different panels uh, because because some of the higher you know names on the the show, you know, one they want somebody that can talk and be smooth. Too, they prefer somebody they're comfortable with and I know and I'm friends with a lot of people so I usually would handle his walking dead things or um, you know or or um, power rangers and stuff like that because these are all people that I know for years you know so right. and I and I'll get into stuff that a normal person wouldn't necessarily know you know what I mean or get things out of people that normal people wouldn't get uh, I've done Star Wars ones Star Trek ones uh, like for George Takei um, you know, so like you name it, um, I've done it. So long story longer, I get in this this week, this weekend, and he goes, he goes, Brim, listen, I need to to see if you could do me a favor because I, I want you to not only mod one of these um panels, but you're actually gonna be on the panel as well. I said, what? What are you talking about? Was it a wrestling panel? No, 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 no. It's not a wrestling panel. Listen, just I need you to do me a favor. Can you do this? But sure, no problem didn't tell me what it was. And normally I tell him, I said, you got to tell me what it is before I'm going on. So I can at least, if I don't know the person, I can do a quick search on my phone just so I know what they've been on and what they've done. And uh, he goes, don't worry about it. You're going to know you'll be fine. I said, okay, fine. No problem. I walk in and there I am with Carol Spinney and uh, what do you call it? Speedy delivery from um, what do you call it? Uh, Mr. Oh, Rogers. From Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and what do you call it? We, uh, we wound up doing a PBS um, panel and uh, we connected there and that was fantastic. It was, it was just a, what a wonderful experience. Um, and yeah, from there on in, uh, you know, Carol and his wife and, and I, we stayed in touch and, you know, until he passed, you know, so that was, it was a wonderful thing. So, but uh, unbelievable how I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm 47 and, you know, <laughs> you know, looking back and going, holy crap, you know, I started in Sesame Street. It's it's just it blows my mind sometimes because you forget, you know what I mean? You forget. You can't remember everything you've done, or it's not always in the back of your mind. Um, and it always blows people away. They're like, "Oh man, I can't believe you were on Sesame Street." Oh, cra that's crazy. Or Romper Room. I remember the Magic Mirror. Oh, you know. <laughs> so, oh and, yeah, PBS man. That was my weekend when I was a kid. Yeah. It, Sesame Street, Electric Company, especially. Uh, I, I, I always you say Spider Man. I remember Spider Man and, and Blue Beetle. Mm -hmm. Morgan Freeman was on Electric Company mm -hmm. when we were kids. And of course, Mr. Rogers and so on and so forth. And, and see, I was fortunate enough that I saw Sesame Street pre Elmo days. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, Elmo, the guy who, the guy who did Elmo, um, we actually met. Um, and I, I, cause I re reconnected with Gordon. Um, I, I don't speak to him normally regularly now, but, uh, Gordon and, and Elmo, the guy who played Elmo were doing New York comic-con. Uh, one of the times I was signing New York comic-con, um, and what he calls, so the Sesame street people actually brought my, while I was signing, they brought my wife and my, my youngest who was really little at the time and took them behind the scenes while the line was on hold. And brought her, my little one, Haley, in to meet Elmo. It was the, the light of her life. She was so extremely, like, blown away. And Elmo's, oh, I, I know your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just like, ah, you know. And uh, 
So I got to go in and thank them for that. And that was a great experience for her and for me to be able to reconnect with Gordon and, uh, and the Sesame Street people. I'd love to go back and do something on Sesame Street um, at some point. I just don't know if it'll ever happen. But, yeah. you know, new publicist, let's see what happens. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a big kid at heart, and I refuse to grow up. I, if somebody had told me uh, that adulthood was going to be like this, I would have refused to uh, participate. But, uh, no, seriously, in my late 30s is when I finally got into Comic-Cons. And the only reason I did was a buddy of mine he he built these uh they're tiny homes but they look like castles and they were made up for kids to you know they would have birthday parties and whatnot in it and so it was featured at a comic-con in houston and he needed somebody to help him and so i'm like heck yeah so i got into it i met danny trejo and danny's uh, great oh uh that man there's just a whole list of people that i met at this one and it was it was really cool they would come up and they would talk to us and some of us even exchanged numbers that kind of thing uh isai morales guy is phenomenal um i talked to him for a long time and it, i was like man this is kind of cool i'm gonna keep coming back and so I, i'd go to actually enjoy it you know go in and, and right. check everything out and i i noticed you you were part of the peter mayhew story Mm-hmm. Yeah, Peter met and him. Angie, Peter and Angie are very. I love them to death. And again, Peter passed away not too long ago, but yeah. long enough ago. Um, matter of fact, it's funny because Angie just tweeted me the other day, his wife Angie, because um, I was complaining about the new Batman movie. I said, "I that's not my Batman." Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been tossing that up and down whether I'm going to go or not. Yeah, she said she said that she felt it was a fantastic movie and that they did a great job with it. So I might give it a shot just because Angie said so. But yeah. Peter, fantastic, fantastic person. Angie, his wife, uh, my love, I love her to death. Uh, their daughter, you know, um, yeah, you know. So, and I, and and the the one the, one of the coolest things about being Brimstone, um, and I hate to put it that way, but it's the truth. And and doing all the things that I've done is that I've been able to become friends with a lot of my heroes and a lot mm-hmm. of people that I watched coming up and. Um, let me tell you, it, it is true. There's a lot of times where, you know, um, it's not necessarily don't meet your, don't meet your heroes. Cause you know, it, it'll put a bad taste in your mouth it, because it's not always the case. Um, and, and honestly, 99% of the people that I've connected with, um, have been absolutely fabulous. Um, I agree. you know, and if there's just like the 1% out there who will remain nameless, and I've got stories, but what do you call it? Uh, they're good to me, but they're just not necessarily good to the other people uh, or, you know, certain fans or whatever. And it's also, you got to understand people that we're all, we're all human. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And sometimes we have good days. Sometimes we have bad days. So, you know, every so often you get somebody on a bad day, you might, it, it might, they might not have meant to be in a way towards you, but that's just the way it came out simply based on the day that they were having, you know? So, oh, yeah. um, you know, I, I, people shouldn't necessarily judge it based on one instance. They should judge based over uh, multiple times. You know what I mean? If they had multiple experiences with somebody. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Peter was one of those fantastic guys. Um, loved his Dr. Pepper, loved his cigarettes. Um, what do you call it? Uh, you go to their room and, and you walk in, they've got a ton of Dr. Pepper. And the, the smoke would just billow out like a chimney. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, rest in peace, Pete. I loved him to death. He was um, really sweet, man. I really yeah. liked him. Yeah, we uh, we actually developed for the comic book. Um, my father in the comic book, the architect, was based on Peter. Um, what do you call it? So the, the you could see the similarities in the uh, in the character design to him. And he was supposed to voice him in the animated series and then the animated series wound up having issues moving forward. So we weren't ever able to get that, that finished, um, which sucks because it started out really, really good. Um, and it, you know, that being said, you know, um, other people, you know, the, the biggest problem is, is that some of your heroes are a lot older and then, you know, you get some time with them and then you get close and then, you know, the inevitable yeah. happens, you know, Stan, Stan Lee was, was a very good friend. 
um, you know, and he passed and I just, I cried for days, you know what I mean? The big man crying, you know, like, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I cried. I was like, love that guy. He was, he was a, a fantastic, very inspirational person. And, um, the last couple of years, I didn't even get to see him, nor did a lot of his friends. Most of us didn't get to see him because of the crap that was going on, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm one of the celebrity spokespeople for the Stan Lee Foundation for Literacy and Children. So, yeah. you know, I, I was asked to do it. And, um, you know, every year Stan would say, you know, hey, Brimstone, would you come out here and do my kamikaze for me? What do you call Because he was doing this, uh, he was a part of this uh, event, uh, this big Comic-Con that would take place at the LA Center. And, uh, you know, so every year I'm, I'm out there, Stan, I'm out there, I'm, I'll, whatever you need, you know, because I love the guy. So, you know, it was devastating when he passed. Same thing with Peter, same thing with Carol, you know what I mean? And the list goes on. Um, what's really upsetting is that, you know, knowing so many people and being on the circuit for as long as I have, um, the amount of people who you wind up seeing go. Um, you know, I've had over the last couple of years an extraordinary amount of friends who have passed. Um, yeah, and and s- some of them that way before their time. You know what I mean? Um, one of my friends from Walking Dead, Moses Mosley, was just shot and killed just, a, 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 what, about a month or so ago. You know what I mean? Over, I think it was in Atlanta. You know, like, so what? It's crazy. He's younger than me. You know what I mean? He's in his, uh, I think his late late 20s or early 30s. Young, young kid, good looking guy, talented, a whole life ahead of him. You know what I mean? And, and that, you know, uh, other friends who took their lives. You know what I mean? A lot of people in the wrestling industry with, with severe depression, um, you know, and, and just it's just a really sucky thing uh, because it's not that what do you call it? Uh, it's, it's that I just know more people like your average, you know, an average person that might not have that as much loss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when you're out and about, you're in this industry and you're doing conventions every week and you're doing business and you're doing this and you're doing that and you're spread out like I am. You know what I mean? Because, well, you know, my resume to a certain extent. So, you know, you know, I deal with a lot of people and I deal with people all over the world. And um, I just happen to know more people than the average person. So it's just by chance more people are passing that I happen to have crossed paths with. And, uh, you know, and, and it was hurting me in my head for a while. It was hurting me. I was like, oh, I oh my imagine. friends are going. And, uh, you know, my wife said, she goes, babe, you know, listen, it's just because you know that many more people. It has nothing to do with, you know, uh, you're not bad luck. <laughs> like, well, thank you. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy, you know. And it, what's, what's even worse are people that I've been meaning to call but we've been so busy that I hadn't had a chance to call. There were a couple of people that I was, I was, I literally picked up the phone, uh, you know, to call them and said, ah, you know, to invite them on, you know, grind house or do something or, you know, and then I'm like, ah, I'll call them later. And, and then, uh, you know, a couple of days goes by a week goes by. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, Brim, uh, we got bad news for you. What, what, what happened? Uh, so-and-so passed away. That's happened about five times in the past couple of years. Oh that, my gosh! What do you call it? Um, what do you call it? Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Carmen? Uh, what do you call it from um, from Godfather? Uh, we did a movie. Uh, him and I did um, uh, Preacher Six, and um, what do you call it? He was supposed to come on the show, and uh, and I I didn't hear from him, and what do you call it? And he he no showed, and. Uh, I was like, that's not like Carmen. I know that he would, he would definitely, you know, have at least called me back. I found out that he would, had been in the hospital and then he had passed away a few days later. So what do you call it? It's just like, holy crap. You know what I mean? And that, that does stuff to you. You know what I mean? It does stuff to you when, when you're in, in, in my seat. Um, uh, and, and it's just, it is what it is. Um, you know, you remember people's friendly faces and, you know, the joy it was to see them. And when they saw you, you know what I mean? The, you know, going out to eat, dining together, you know what I mean? And it's just, you know, these moments that, that, cause that's all you have in life, right? You have moments, you know, yeah. and, and these things that you'll always remember, they'll always be here in your head. And, and um, I got to tell you, man, it, it's, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride, especially the last 
10, 15 years. You know what I mean? Because I've really been in it. I've traveled more than what a man should. And uh, what do you call it? I, I've, I've had the, the, the extreme pleasure and honor and privilege to meet so many amazing people um, who've done so many amazing things. So I could go on forever. So I'll just stop right there. Oh, no, no, man. I know there are other things you wanted to hit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in doing this show, I've had the privilege of meeting a lot of great people. And some, some of them were people that I've, I've admired since I was a kid. Wow. And, and now I can call them on the phone and, and it's, it's amazing. And, but you were talking about how meeting some of your, your heroes sometimes is a bad experience. Well, I got to meet Sam J. Jones, you know, Flash Gordon. Oh. And the, <laughs> the day that I met him, I guess he was having an off day and he was, he was just a jackass. He's always cranky. But then <laughs> I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but the second time that I met him, he was so friendly, He's a so sweet. welcoming. Yeah. I mean, we had a great conversation. And of course, Melanie Anderson was there and like, oh, my God, I had such a crush on her. Yeah, uh, You know, it, you know what it is? They also some of them are just so fed up with um, like the it's like the same questions and the same stuff over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. um that what do you call it it's just you can't you can't do it like that you know they're they just sick of it they don't want to hear it you know what i mean they don't want to hear the same questions over and over again oh i understand um, that so i but but you know what like somebody like me you know i appreciate i appreciate you know when people come and see me i appreciate when they ask the questions even if it's the same questions dumb questions whatever it is there is no dumb question you know what i mean it, it, it's you know let me answer it for you because I appreciate the people that have put me in the position that I'm in, you know, without them, I wouldn't be where I am. Um, so, you know, there, everybody is, everybody's a little different, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and you know, there, there's some guys and, uh, in the star Trek realm, what do you call it? I'm not going to say who, and I'm not going to discuss it you know, in public, but there are some people that they, they just don't even like their fans. Um, you know, it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, but you know, to each their own. You know, I uh, I get to see and I get to observe a lot of different people. You know what I mean? And uh, I just see things, and and you can see how people act and how people treat other people. And you know, I'm all for the the ones that are good to their fans and the people that that love their their uh, you know their fans. And you could see you could see the difference. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, love that, love it. And and those are the people that I tend to try to really you know um be friendlier with you know you've got guys that are just incredible with their fans you've got like kel mitchell uh kel is fantastic with his fans um what do you call it you've got uh, uh a good portion of the power rangers unbelievable with their fans and their fans are so obsessed so obsessed with them um steve cardenas who is one of the original uh he's the second original red ranger uh, well, there is only one original, I guess. I'm sorry, Steve, but Austin St. John, who I'm also, <laughs> but Steve is the second Ranger. He came in, you know, not long after they started, you know what I mean? Um, so what do you call it? But, uh, um, you know, but Steve uh, is always so fantastic and patient with the fans and, you know, we'll spend the time with them. Same thing with Karen Ashley and, you know, the, uh, the yellow Ranger and, you know, Walter Jones, the original black Ranger. So, you know what I mean? All these cats, they, they just, they love, they love the people that put them in the positions that they're in now. And, and, um, you know, we vibe, you know what I mean? Those are the cats that we go out and we're, we're hanging after the cons, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Norman, Norman Reedus, fantastic. Loves his fans. Rooker. Michael oh, Rooker. I want to meet him so bad. Rooker is a very dear friend. And, and I, I haven't seen him, you know, because pandemic uh, for a while. Last time we saw each other, oh, geez, a, few, a couple of years back already at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Um, it was right before everything had happened because it was like after San Diego and then the world shut down. Um, and I hadn't seen him for a minute before that because he was filming, I think it was Guardians of the Galaxy or something. And um, I, so we come in and out through a, ver a back a private entrance um you know for san diego and um i was coming down just to get a breath of, of air um so there's a big freight elevator you go down this elevator from the signing area take the elevator down and then you're in the back area and they escort you out 
but there's a you know down like there's a, a big walk before you get outside so as i'm walking down the hallway i had to paint the picture uh as i'm walking down the hallway i hear this loud boisterous voice i go son of a bitch is that is this a rooker and, you know and i i t- we turn the corner he's he sees me he goes hey <laughs> they came he jumped on me we gave each other a big hug he had just he had hurt his um his arm so he was in a cast and we got to small talk for a little bit um what do you call it well meanwhile he's got this whole crowd around him uh what do you call it and uh you know but it was so good to see him and he's one of the most he's one of the, he's one of the nuttiest guys you'll ever meet but one of the sweetest guys you'll ever meet i i love him to death his family, his agent, every that whole family, I'm extended family there, and and they always treat me uh, like gold, and and I can't tell you how much I appreciate all of them. Um, and and like I said to, to this day, don't don't nobody say anything bad about my boy Rooker. You know what I mean? I love him. My wife absolutely loves him. Crazy. She she has a Yondu pop that she keeps right <laughs> on the shelf in front of her desk, so she yeah. can look at it all the time. You know, Did you say so she can lick it all the time? Yeah, so she can. Lick, I, I believe I said look at it, but you know, okay, she, I don't know what she does when I'm not around. <laughs> so yeah, so my my um my wife every time uh, what do you call it? Uh, every time if we're watching like the old uh, Walking Dead um, episodes or even if it's even if it's Guardians of the Galaxy or something else, my wife will go Merle because <laughs> Merle was the character on Walking Dead. I'm very I'm I'm tight with a lot of the characters from Walking Dead, um, with a lot of the actors, and uh, you I know, used to love uh, that show. Yeah, what do you call it? Uh, Talking Dead. What do you call it? You know, Hardwick is is a great cat. I, I'm very close with his mom. Funny enough, uh, she was just on Grindhouse, my my show, a couple of weeks ago. I was like. All right, Sharon, you're coming on my show. We're gonna have it. We're gonna hang out. And uh, she's like, okay. So uh, I said, we're gonna make it better than when you were on with Chris, because <laughs> she went on. She went on her son's podcast. Uh, so I was like, all right, you come on, and we'll have a good time. But like, I'm very, very tight with a lot of things Walking Dead, and um, you know, uh, I think it's one of the best shows that is that has been you know out that's ever been put out there. Um, you know, has it did it have some ups and downs? Of course. Uh, but, you know, I think, you know, to stand the test of time like it has and to have as much spinning off of it as it's having now, um, mm-hmm. I think that it's it's epic. And um, what do you call it? I also know them over on the comic book side, you know what I mean, over at Skybound. So, like, you know, I, I, I like I said, I have a love affair with, with The Walking Dead. You know, I'm a fan, but I'm also a friend. Um, and, you know, I, I really I just I love I love. Um, a lot of the people that are from that show and that series are such good people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not talking. Yeah, they're great actors and so just, but uh, good, sweet people. You know what well, I mean? I know Carrie Payton was awesome. I know Harry's fantastic. Uh, he was just absolutely one of the greatest people I've oh, ever yeah. met. Oh yeah, Carrie is. He is a sweetheart. Um, what do you call irony? Was a sweetheart. Um, what do you call it? Every time I see irony, he jumps up and comes and grabs me. Uh, what do you call it? I'm a big guy, so it's hard to do. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, Jesus Christ. I mean, the list goes on. Um, really have a lot of love for these people. And, um, you know, I just, I, I love to, to see what they do uh, after, you know, Walking Dead. Because unfortunately, you know, you're only on Walking Dead for so long sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it's funny, the first time when I met Rita's originally, I remember, I'm pretty sure it was, we were in Ohio and we were out at an event. It was a wizard world we were signing at. And um, what do you call it? We were introduced, um, you know, and, and he was just so casual about it. I think it was like the first, first year that Walking Dead was on. That's how far back we got. Um, and I wasn't familiar with at the time. Um, what's the, the movie that they were, that he was, that he did. Um, the big we movie. Boom, Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. Boondock Saints. Uh, that's one so, of my favorites too. So a great movie, but you know, I I was never I I hadn't seen it prior, and I hadn't seen Walking Dead prior. So he's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm I'm from a show, you know, the, it's called The Walking Dead, whatever. And we hit it off, and we were sitting, and we we stayed in contact for a long time. Uh, somewhere along the line, he changed phones, and I haven't seen him on uh, on tour, so I haven't spoken to him in a while. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure the next time I do. 
you know, things will be good. What a good cat, though, man. So sweet. So well, some some of those folks they stick out from the others. Cause I've met tons and tons of people, mm -hmm. but there's some that I just will never forget because we had a, we'd have like some kind of special moment. I met Mike <clears throat> Coulter, and mm -hmm. so my wife and I are there, and we're Mike talking Coulter to Coulter or Steve Coulter. No, Mike Coulter, the guy that okay. played Luke Cage. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I thought you're talking Walking Dead, Steve. No, Coulter no, no, no I'm talking. Dead. But okay. anyway, yeah, Luke Cage and and. uh so I'm there and I'm like, hey, do you, do you mind taking a picture? And he goes, oh, sure. And he goes, here, let me have your phone. So he grabs my phone. I swear to God, he took 25 pictures. <laughs> and he's just like moving the camera around, making all kinds of faces and stuff. It was just, that's just one of those moments that sticks out from others. Um, Marky Ramon. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. I didn't realize he was such a horror uh, nut, you know? I mean, yeah talk to him and he anyway i went up to take a picture with him and he goes hold on hold this so he's i'm holding a picture of him holding a picture that says happy mother's day on <laughs> <laughs> but i mean sweet guy um i say if I, I meet so many especially doing this show i, I have a paranormal show and mm -hmm. so just about everybody that's been on television i've had them on my show yeah and i got to be friends with the the new cast of ghost hunters and unfortunately mm -hmm. they canceled it for budget reasons but uh got to be real good friends with mustafa and i don't know if you're familiar with the ghost hunters but uh, sounds familiar so now when mustafa comes to town we always get together go out to eat and that kind of thing mm -hmm. and so um, he was having an event and so we we're kind of there helping out and, that, and what have you. And so we're, we're hanging out, we're talking, yada, 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 make us a long story short. Everybody's watching us. Right. And whenever he had to go do his Q and a and whatnot, I'm off to the side and, and then I, I'd have these people come up and they wouldn't have anything to do with me when I first got there. And all of a sudden it's like, mm. Oh, Hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and, trying to get close to him it's, it's, case, it's, yeah. it's funny but he's he's such an uh, a friendly very uh, outgoing kind of guy he he's like you he loves his fans he'll do anything and it's a wonderful family every mm -hmm. time they come to texas we you know we got to go hang out i'm friendliest with uh with rob demarest from uh, ghost hunters international Okay. The, so Rob, um, he actually was, he was in my comic, uh, what do you call it? He did a cameo in the comic years ago. Um, what do you call it? Uh, love, love Rob to death. And, and it's funny cause they were trying to get me to go out and do some of the stuff. Uh, but my schedules would never jive. So, uh, so I couldn't, I couldn't do it and I, I want to, so eventually I'll do it. I've been invited out so many times, uh, for so many different, you know, groups, uh, of ghost hunters and, I want to do it. I just, I haven't been able to. Really oh, when you come to Texas, you got to go with us. Yeah. Oh, you we'll go? Take, oh, you we'll, we, we will take you ghost hunting. That's, that's what I do in my spare time. You ever meet someone that you, I mean, just like a, you're shaking all over or you just get overwhelmed because you're just so excited to meet them. Cause I mean, most of the time well, it's for just me? like, yeah, for you. Uh, I, you know, I've never, Oh, do I, have I gotten that way? Yeah. No, 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 no. I've been around so long. I don't care who it is. I'm just, you know, everybody. When you've been in the game, there's nobody that's, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm not, I'm not intimidated. I've been around for way too long to be intimidated by anybody and, and what they've done. I respect, there's certain people that I respect more, you know, in terms of uh, what they've accomplished. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, me meeting and shake now. I, I have I had fans that have come over to me shaking and crying and like, oh, yes, that is the most humbling experience you will ever, ever, ever have. Um, what do you call it? I'll never forget one of one of my craziest ones on that side was in Vermont. Um, I had a young lady who I still, by the way, still stay in touch with to this day because she made that much of an impression on me. Um, and she would call it. She was there with her mother and she was on the line waiting for me. And um, what do you call it? Uh, she was like, you know, couldn't, <laughs> couldn't stop. And just like, geez. And the closer she got, the more she was welting up and the more 
And then what do you call it? She was about five or six, maybe a couple more back. Um, and her mom was rubbing her back and her mother was kind of like this. And I, and I said, I said to the person, I said, listen, do you mind? Give me one second. I got out and I said, I went over and I said, I said, sweetheart, I said, you're here. Are you here to see me? And she's like, yes. <laughs> Crying tears. Yes. I said, I said, would you like to come up front right now? Is that okay, guys? Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, would you like to come up front and meet me now? I said, it looks like you're getting really overwhelmed <laughs> in the line. And she's like, yes. Yeah. So, so I, I took her by the hand and I brought her up to the front of the table. And what do you call it? I, uh, and, and I said, I said, why are you crying? And she just couldn't get the words out, you know? And uh, her mother was like, you know, we came all the way from, from uh, Canada to come see you. Uh, and, and what do you call it? Um, you know, because I hadn't been in Canada for a long time and I'm, I'm not planning on being in Canada for a long time. <laughs> but um, that's another long story. But what do you call it? I said, um, you know, but, but she said, uh, um, you know, that she's like a huge fan and she used to watch me all the time. And she, you know, and she, what do you call it? She just, you know, uh, absolutely was, you know, just so overwhelmed to meet me. So um, I did, I signed the autographs for her. I took the pictures. I said, sweetheart, would you like a hug? And, and she just bawling. So I, I gave her a nice big hug and what do you call it? I, tears all on my, my shoulder. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, thank you so much. Uh, what do you call it? I, I gave her my personal Facebook. I said, I'll add you back. And I stayed in <laughs> touch with her for years after that. Um, and now, now she's not shy. Matter of fact, she just, um, messaged me. And the reason why I thought about it is she just messaged me about a week or so ago saying that they missed me. Um, so what do you call it? But see, these are the people that, that, you know, they care, they love you. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, why wouldn't I want to give that love back? Oh, of course. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Why wouldn't I? Uh, younger she's, she's a young lady then now she's a mother of two um you know what i mean like sweet sweet kid and and i um you know these are the people that you know they they will do anything you know they support you and you know they'll they'll go to the to the depths with you um you know i've got team brimstone i've got you know these fans that are, are so fantastic that they're a part of a team that you know they you know they're they're there for me um so when, when you say, have I ever been like that? No, I, I've never been like that because I started so young and I was exposed to it so early. Like yeah. my, my kids are not, they don't get overwhelmed at all. They're like, oh, okay. You know, they don't give a, they don't give a damn uh, about anybody. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> they, they've been exposed to it their whole life, yeah. you know? Um, so it's like nothing for them. Uh, you know, for me, it was the same thing. I was in it, so it didn't bother me. However, on the flip side, the people that are like that towards me, I hold them near and dear. You yeah. Know? Hope that makes sense. Well, I've met people that are D listers to A listers. And mm -hmm. for the most part, I treat everybody just like I would anybody else. You know, it, it, I don't care if I just met you or you've been a friend all my life. I treat everybody pretty much the same. Yeah. So I don't really get that way, giddy and that kind of thing. I will say the first time I ever got nervous was when I met Gene Simmons. Oh, Gene, <laughs> he's I mean, one I, person I would like to sit down with for a little while. I, mean, I didn't flip out or anything, but I was trying to hold the camera because it was they give you a flip camera when you go to the meet and greets. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting there and I'm holding it. And I'm trying to keep it steady. And I'm, I guess I was <laughs> nervous that I was going to act like an idiot in front of him. The <laughs> only time I can say I ever cried meeting someone is when I met Boris Vallejo. I, I don't okay. know why, but I mean, I love his art. He's done all kinds of fantasy you know conan kind of stuff and just him and his wife are two of the sweetest people you ever meet and he's once again one of those he loves his fans and something overcame me i don't know what it was i wasn't nervous to meet him but i just i, I teared up i don't know what the feeling was that overcame me that i i had to but it was one of those moments you meet someone you really, really like and admire. Uh, I don't know. But anyway, moving on, let's talk a little more about the comics. And you sure. uh, you say that you, you voice some characters in, mm -hmm. in video games. I'll have to admit, I'm not into video games. I don't know anything oh. about them. <laughs> no worries. No worries. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of different things. Like, uh, so the comic book um you know is brimstone and the border hounds and uh right now 
uh, the comic book has been put on hold. Um, listen, I have ran for many years, so uh, we were actually the only independently owned and operated comic that was sold in every Barnes & Noble and B. Dalton of the world, uh, right next to Marvel and DC and, and Image. Um, you know, in the last few years, what do you call it? It's, it's very expensive to do all that. You know what I mean? And um, it's very time consuming and it's not as profitable. Even the biggest, the biggest comics that are out there, um, you know, you're talking about uh, your, your Batmans or your, you know, your X-Men and stuff like that. DC's tanking. Oh, yeah, no, because you can't make money. You're not you don't make money on comics. You make money on all of the licensing that goes along with yeah, it. Yeah, So the money, the money that I made with you know on merchandise and 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 so forth, um, all of that was tremendous. Um, all my stuff was on Big Bang Theory. Um, you know what I mean? It, it's all of that is fantastic. That's great. The books themselves don't make money. You know what I mean? They sold a lot, mm-hmm. but it costs you. To just to put it into Barnes and Noble was costing ridiculous amount of money, you know what I mean? And and they don't even send the back; they don't sell. They rip the covers off, and that's it. So you know what I mean? It was not, you know, to keep that going for a certain amount of time was just to show how big my thing was. You know what I mean? Uh, that was a power move. That's, that's what all she that said. Was exactly that was it was a power move, and um, you know, and that put me where I needed to be at the time. And you know, we left it there and kept going with it for a while, but. After after being there for you know quite some time, I was like, you know what? It's time to pull out of there. And um, that's, that's what she, she said. said. I knew you were gonna say it. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was time to pull out uh, of there and and decide to uh, you know go a different route with it. And um, what do you call it? We were very successful. We were making a lot of money with it. But you know the cost to put together a comic people don't understand you know what the what the costs are for that Mm -hmm. you know you've got these people that do these these indie comics and they have to go on kickstarter and they're looking for like ten twenty thousand dollars because the some of the artists are just killing them on on numbers you know and artists um, don't even make that much anymore no no i mean and and with me you know i worked out my deal so my team everybody had vested interest so they made money on you know they were part of the business they made money on the entire business overall rather than making a little bit of money on the, you know, on the comic. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to make sure that the comic looked good. They wanted to make sure that it was done in time. They wanted to, you know what I mean? Because it's, it's a business. Um, and the comic was fantastic. And what do you call it still is, and it'll come back. It's just a matter of taking a break um, because I've got bigger fish to fry right now. Um, yeah. And the comic, like I said, love it, love it, love it. The kids books are great. Um, I did the kids books that spun off of the comics so that the, um, you know, the adults could vibe with their children um, with the same characters, you know, like, you know, think about it. Some of the kids that they watch the um, uh, what is it on, on Disney X HD or something like that. They watch like the mini Marvel characters and oh, yeah. stuff like that. So all these characters that, you know, the parents have been reading and loving for so many years. Now the kids are exposed to it you know, as tiny tots, you know, and then they're growing up with it. And then when they graduate and then they go to the, the big, the real deal characters, you know what I'm saying? So that oh, was yeah. the same premise that I did with the border pups. Uh, the kids books is I wanted them to get the kids to get to know uh little brim, little dog, little lush, you know what I mean? And, you know, little orgy, little orgathon, which is the, you know, brim's uh, half brother, uh, you know, in the comics. So all these characters, He's the only demon that was in the, in the books, but we got away with it. Um, you know, it, it was uh, we, we made sure that the little, uh, you know, the little books were I wanted people to be familiar with them. So, you know, w- when you think of kids books, what do you think of Bernstein Bears, Clifford, stuff like that? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, those books have a very specific size. They're easy for the kids to hold the way they you know, the way they're they're done. And it's familiar for them. Curious George. They're all the same size. You yeah. know what I mean? So I made sure that we cut our Border Pups books the same size so they would have the, familiar, the, familiar, ah, the familiarity <laughs> with, with what he called first Say day it, new say mouth. it. First day with the new mouth. <laughs> what he called They would have that, you know, with the books, you know, as well as be able to vibe with the parents 
And then the parents, you know, are excited because they love the characters. So now they're seeing, you know, this this stuff and getting getting to let their kids be exposed to these characters. It always worked out so well. And at the conventions, it was fantastic. And you got these people that used to follow me in music. And then they followed me through wrestling, you know, who come and they, they're like, you know, I, I watched you when you were, you know, drumming and so-and-so and we used to go to your shows and, and all your, your, you know, your, your tapes and uh, tapes they don't even have tapes anymore. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> or your CDs. It's like, there's no CDs anymore either. It's MP3s. What do you call it? Uh, but, you know, these people that have followed me over the years that, you know, now they have these versions of me in, as this character, you know, that, that they can vibe with as well. So it's, it's always a really cool thing to see how the people uh, respond to what's out there. And uh, the comic itself was just such a great experience. And I built Hound Comics Inc. from it. Um, I didn't expect to build an entire company off of it. Well, it you, was you're a, an advocate for literacy anyway, right? Yes. Well, I am for the Stan Lee Foundation. Right. So what do you call it? But that didn't happen until after I was doing the comics. Yeah. Um, I would have never become friends with Stan if I hadn't done the comic thing, you know? I mean, maybe I would have, but it wouldn't have been the way I did. I mean, you know, uh, Stan, that that was all all based on, you know, the stuff I did, you know, with the comics and, and uh, you know, just me as a person. I just met his people and his people loved me and then his people introduced me to him and then he loved me. Um, it's fun. It's just crazy how things work out. Um, Do you know yeah. the stats on uh, the literacy here in America? No, I don't. I'm not. I, I don't do well with that stuff without anything in front of me. There's too I'm many. Really there's way too many out there. I yeah. don't know the exact stats on it, but it's kind of shocking how many yeah. adults don't know how to read. It's crazy. And one of the big things with with the Stan Lee Foundation is not just literacy, but it's also visual literacy. Um, what do you call it? And and under, and a lot of schools and a lot of people are they're down on when kids read comic books they're down on when but that kids helps read, them right on graphic novels and trade paperbacks and the the fact is is it is first of all if the kid is reading that's good that mm -hmm. anything that they're reading is good let them read you know what i mean two understanding visual literacy you know when something is hot what does it have a little line showing that it's steaming right, right. if something smells maybe there's a little fly that's flying around around it you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, when somebody does a punch and it says pow, but there's a big, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, like uh, uh, energy coming from it. You know what I mean? It's you need like, to okay, teach well, the people around here about the uh, handicap stickers <laughs> or handicap plates. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't park here. But, you know, Thank but that's, you. it's very important. It's very important for people to understand this stuff and learn it and um, you know, I, I've had to do so many different things with it already and, uh, you know, over the years and, and I've also, you know, I sit and I'll read to the kids and I do stuff with them and I, I have them read with me and it's just a really cool experience to be able to connect with, with the families like that and, and to help, help children. Um, you know, well, I'm a very big advocate for it. There's so many celebrities out there that they talk the talk but they don't walk the walk. And it seems like you actually, you know, get down and, and, and help. Yeah, I really try. Um, you know, when we went into the pandemic, one of the big issues uh, here locally was that, um, you know, they obviously all the schools closed and, and everything happened. And there were a lot of these um, single parent households who, you know, they might've been on, on help, you know, getting assistance and, they rely on their kid getting, you know, breakfast at school or yeah. lunch at school, um, you know, and, and, you know, they don't have the money to afford it and then they couldn't work. And, you know, so the food pantry um, that was here locally, one of them here on the island was bare. It was, it was bare. Um, I heard that it was having an issue. And I, I said to my, my co-hosts over at Grindhouse, my business partners, I said, all right, I got to do something. So are you guys in? Yeah. What do you want to do? And they're like, of course we're in. What do we need to do? Um, so I contacted my friends over at Walmart. Um, I contacted some local, um, local politicians that I know, um, you know, and I said, listen, I need you to let the, 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 um, I need you to let them know that I'm going to be coming there with 
a a very big amount of food. I said uh, and and uh, stuff. You know that's the you know baby stuff, formula and diapers and all that. All that. I said I need to I need them to open up because I can't come there when when normal people are there and there's going to be a lot to go to do and this is when I have the time to do it and I'm going out there and I'm doing this myself. Um, I went to Walmart. I had about ten grand in gift cards from Walmart that they donated. Um, and then I did pretty much close to the same from here grindhouse we put in. And normally we do we give our time. We don't normally give money back, but this time we we put the money in. Um, and I brought close to 20 grand's worth of food, diapers, formula, anything you could possibly think of. And I brought it in and um, what do you call it refilled their entire pantry. Nice. Um, and what do you call it? And, and I had to make multiple trips and I did all the shopping myself. Um, and I stretched every single cent. So, you know, uh, that was that man. Um, you know, that, that was what I did. I, I actually got, not that I needed it. Um, I did it, you know, without, without calling the news, without calling the, Hey, look what I did. This is, yeah, that's, not what that's this another is thing. <laughs> you know, it's not the, it's not the look what I did, but what do you call it? Um, what do you call it? One of the senators over here, um, who, who I'm very friendly with, uh, Kevin Thomas, he actually um, gave me, he, he awarded Grindhouse uh, the New York State Senate Award, uh, the Empire Award 2020, which is the highest uh, honor a business can get, you know, by New York State, by the Senate. Um, and what he called, so we were honored with that. And, you know, I got a couple of other awards for it also. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't need this, but thank you. Okay. Um, I didn't do it for this, but thank you. Um, you know what, just all I ask for people, if, 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 you know, if anything, I hope that it inspires people. You know what I'm saying? I hope it yes. inspires people. And, um, you know, cause I aspire to inspire. And, and the biggest thing for me is if, if, you know, somebody can go out there and do something nice or something that's, that's good for someone else makes me happy. You know, if I can influence people to go out and to, you know, do something kind for someone else, that makes me happy. There's a lot of people who just, they don't care. They don't care about their fellow human. They don't care about their neighbor. They don't care about the, the old man down the street or the old woman down the street who is living by themselves and, you know, can't shovel themselves out. You know what I mean? From a big yeah. snowstorm, you know, what, did you forget about them? What happened if, what, what if it was your grandma or grandpa, you know what I mean? Or your mother or father, you know, my kids from a young age, they went over and they used to just down the block. They knew, who the older folks were and they would just go and shovel their driveways not to make the money off of it they just shovel the driveways and then the the people would come out of the house let me give you some money no 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 that's okay thank you you know for the for offering we did it because we want to make sure that you can you know get out if you need to an emergency you know and that's and that's doing good in the neighborhood that's doing good and doing right by your fellow man and woman you know mm -hmm. so if if you know what i like to say is for everybody out there you know if you feel inspired you want to do something good. You want to feel good about yourself. Go out, find a, find some kind of a charity, something that motivates you. Maybe your friend had cancer and died of cancer, or has cancer, or somebody has leukemia, or you know, uh, candle lighters. Whatever it is, find something that you vibe with. That's something that means something to you. Don't you don't have to spend money. You don't have to put money to it. Go and take one day one hour out of your day and go give back, go do some, some time at, um, you know, at one of their events or donate some of your time, some of your energy for them. You don't know how much people appreciate that mm -hmm. and how much that helps these, these foundations save lives and, and, you know, and, and help people. So what do you call it? You're going to feel, you're going to do something good for someone else. You're going to feel good about yourself. You know what I mean? And you're doing it for a reason that means something to you. So, you know, go out there, find something, whether it's an hour, a day, a month, a, a month out of the year, a day out of the year, you know, whatever it is, make that time just to do something good for someone else. And I guarantee you, you will never, ever turn back. You will always feel good about it and you will always go back and, and, and be a part of it. And it takes um, your mind off of your own problems. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody's got problems. Everybody. Everybody's got issues. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, look, 
I, like I said, you didn't hear me say, go spend money. You didn't hear me go say, oh, go spend five bucks, 10 bucks, a buck. You know what? For some people, a dollar is a lot of money. You know what I mean? So yeah. guess what? A dollar will buy, you know, five packs of ramen, which will get somebody through a week. You know what I mean? And as, as awful as that sounds, you know what I mean? Some people, unfortunately, you know, live like that. Yeah. Um, and, but the fact is, I never said that. What I did say is time, which is money, okay? You go and you spend a little bit of time, even if it's an hour of your time giving back, it counts. You know what mm. I mean? So, you know, anyway. just getting out and meeting your neighbor. All right. There, there's some older folks out there now. Yeah. Maybe they have a nice home. Maybe they can take care of themselves financially, but they have no one in their life. They're, they're lonely. Right. You can, you can spend a couple of hours hanging out with them and talking with them, but you get all kinds of cool stories. You get to know someone and it makes them feel like there's life's worth living, but you've also got that guy or that woman it's on the corner that has nothing you know right. man go go make some food and hand it out or something you know a right. anything just find someone out there that needs some help of course and that's what it comes down to just being a good person you know what i mean just being a good person just like yes. when you and i were discussing and we're not going to say what we were discussing before we got on but you know just be good to one another it's okay exactly. to have differences it's okay to disagree on things. Just be human and be respectful and respect one another's opinions. And that's it. You know what I mean? And this world will be that much of a better place. And you will have that much more of a, a, a positive life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's the more times, the more you smile, the more smiles will come back to you. The more positive you put into this world, the more positivity that will come back to you. Exactly. If you, if you, if you manifest, it, it will manifest itself. That's it. End of story. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's, that's, you know, you know, there's, there's nothing extraordinary about me. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, a, I try to be a good person. When I go to the grocery store, go to Walmart, what have you, I don't like to go to the self checkout line. Um, and I'm not tooting my own horn here, but I, I'm just one of these people that I need to interact with other folks. Oh yeah. Me too. And so I'll, I'll wait that extra 10 minutes to get up to talk to the cashier. I like to joke around and, you know, be a goofball. And, you know, you never know that you might be talking to someone who's thought about ending themselves, just giving up on life. And to have someone come up to make them smile could make a big difference. You could change that person's mind. Just being yeah. kind to one another. Yeah. Absolutely. That's it. It all comes down to just being kind to one another. And unfortunately, our world is, is so divided all over the place right now. Everybody um, wants to be just, a victim. Everybody wants to be a victim and everybody wants to point fingers. You know what I, I mean? It's exactly. Like, like, you know, and, and it's it's a sad state of the world. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all on the same team. We all got to play as a team if we want to survive. You know, so. uh you know, it's better to live and disagree than be dead and dis and, and agree. Uh, wait, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's better to be alive and disagree than than what do you call it? Uh, and be, than be dead and and, and agree call it and agree. I guess <laughs> because well, we, if, if, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. Or just to be dead. Forget the agree part. My brain's yeah. not working yet. Not enough coffee. <laughs> I mean, you you and I grew up in the '70s. And you remember how things were back then. Things were a lot different. You saw more, you know, prejudice and things like that back then than what you see now. There, we don't have to agree on everything, just like you said. Right. But I've never seen people be so uncivil to each other, even <laughs> back then, as they are right now, just because they Twitter. disagree. Oh my god! <laughs> you know that's why I got rid of Twitter. <laughs> I got rid of yeah. my Twitter account. Yeah. And let me tell you something, folks. Twitter is not the real world. <laughs> if you listen to Twitter, you think that everybody hates each other. I beg to differ because I can go into my local store and meet anybody. I don't care if, if they're a different religion, different skin color, different gender, whatever their sexuality is. Mm -hmm. I can still have a great conversation. Right. Um, 
my my youngest grandson lives with us. He's two years old. We go to the store, and he doesn't care. He says hi to everyone. You know, that's mm -hmm. an icebreaker when he goes hi, 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 and someone's oh, that he's so darling. You have, may have just met another friend right there, right? And that, that's the real world, not what you see on Twitter, mm -hmm. not what you hear in the news. <laughs> everybody, everybody on Twitter, they're hiding behind the uh, hiding behind the internet. It's, it's, yeah, they it, are. They are. One thing. The, the the funny thing is that um, you know, again, you you grew up, you know, the, the same way I did. We didn't have computers. We didn't have phones. I mean, when we first got beepers, it was like, wow, you know what I mean? And um, we didn't have cell phones and internet and all that. So for, for us, you know, like um, you know, this is, we grew up before all this garbage, you know? So, you know, now, you know, like if you had something to say to somebody, you'd say it to their face. And mm -hmm. if you couldn't handle yourself, you, you know, you know, you're going to wind up getting cracked in the jaw. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, if you want to say something stupid, so people people wouldn't you know be as you know wah in your face about whatever it may be, whether it's it doesn't have anything. It could be about anything. People would watch their tone a little bit more. Now they're hiding behind the screen, and um, you know, just, and it has to do with everything. I have haters, man. People that talk smack about me left, right, and sideways. It's like man, you wouldn't do that you, to your face. <laughs> if you did it to my face. I, either I'd laugh at you or I'd knock you about three pegs down to size because, you know, I came from the streets, man. Don't, don't ever, you can't take the street out of the man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was one of the only white kids in an all black area, you know? And, um, you know, I, I fought in the streets with everybody else. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, so before I got into pro wrestling, I knew how to handle myself. So, you know, like there's, there's, it's a, 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 a mentality when you grow up, you know, the way I grew up is a, a, a specific mentality that, you know, you have respect, even if you're going to fight against somebody, you, you have that respect for the other person and you don't underestimate the other person, the people and the kids now and the way that blah, 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 blah. they didn't learn those values. They didn't, they didn't get their ass handed to them in the street or handed someone else, you know, their ass in the middle of the street. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you, they didn't, they didn't go, go bare knuckles and, and beat the snot out of people. You know what I mean? Like the, the fact is, is they've probably never been in a real fight their entire life, you know, and, and they probably haven't sat and got in front of somebody and opened their mouth the same way they do online into somebody's face. Cause I'll tell you what, there's one thing that I don't tolerate and that's BS to myself, to my family, to my friends. And, you know, so in real life, you know, if it when it, you know if somebody wants to talk smack, feel free to try to come at me. But understand if you if you're gonna you know dish the dish, get ready to be eaten. You know what I mean? I <laughs> like, know what you mean. That's it. And I'm a nice guy. If, if nothing, if you get nothing else from the conversation, I just I'm a nice guy. I I love everybody. I'm friendly. There's no reason to hate. Why why hate on me? Why hate on you? Why hate on another? There's no reason except that they feel inadequate with their own lives and their own positions or their own choices. People need to just step back and understand that, you know, like everybody's different. Everybody's got their own strengths. Everybody's got their own weaknesses. doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I'm as successful as I am, there's a reason for it. It's because I worked hard for it. You could do the same thing that I do. Every single thing you can do that I do, you just have to apply yourself and do it. If you sit down and you're spending all your time hating on me or hating on you or hating on them or hating on this one, guess what, brother? You ain't getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go any further. Because have you ever seen anybody, you know, that's hating on you doing better than you? No. That's why they're hating you. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, you and judge people for who they are now, oh, yeah. not what they were in the past. I'm not the same person I was in the past. I was an no. alcoholic. I was a drug addict. Uh -huh. I, you know, I hoard around, I, you name it. If it was a vice, I was probably doing it, Yeah. but I'm not that person anymore. I, I, I very rarely drink anything alcoholic anymore. Yeah. The only drugs I do are the ones for my diabetes and high blood pressure, and all that, <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I'm happily married. Mm -hmm. I don't look at other women. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm content to be a husband, a father, a grandfather. Mm-hmm. So don't judge me for who I, I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago, 20 years right. ago, what have you. Right. My grandparents. OK, my grandparents grew up in the 30s. Mm. All right. So that was the time where everybody was basically was prejudiced. Mm-hmm. If my grandparents could change, anybody could change. Right. Absolutely. My first wife was Hispanic and I was worried that my, my grandparents were going to freak on me. They took her in. They loved her just like one of their own kids. I never, you know, when I was little, I saw the prejudice in, in my grandparents, loving people, but they were, they were prejudiced. And then when they got older, I noticed that they were friendly to everyone. They didn't talk bad about anyone anymore. Mm-hmm. Good. So that's how you judge them. Not for what they were when they were growing up, but what, what were they you know, before they passed away? Right, 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 right. It's true. You know, people can change. Um, people can people can change. And and what do you call it? Um, listen, when I was first coming up, especially, you know, uh, in the wrestling industry and doing my thing, man, I was coming off. I was coming off the music industry where I was a hot shot. And so, you know what I mean? And I was young. I was decent looking. I was, you know what I mean? Not, well, no, I was good looking. I'm ugly now. I was good looking. then. <laughs> um, you know, I was I was young. I was, you know. And, and at the end of the day, you know, like I, I was cocky, I was really cocky and, but I was young and I was mm-hmm. dumb, you know what I mean? And over the time you mature. So, you know, some people from back when may not have liked me then because of the way I was, you know, and, and I can understand that, but again, people change and people are different, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, but the thing is, is, is I own that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I own it. I know. It. I know it. I, I respect the fact that that's what it was. And I changed and it took, it took my friends, you know, good friends to say, Hey, you're getting a little bloated there in your head, you know, maybe let's, let's uh, tone it down a little bit. And I took a step back and I realized, I was like, yeah, you know what? You're right. You know? And, uh, and I looked at myself and I said, this isn't how I should be. I've even seen old interviews and old things that I did where I felt like I needed to, be like you know blown up and chest out to hear kind of like a pompous and i was like you know what i shouldn't have done things like that i that was not that's not how i i should have been but again i was young and dumb and i wasn't dumb but i was young and i was you know um i you know focused i guess you'd say you know my focus was a little wrong uh Mm -hmm. and off but i was focused you know nowadays it's like i've already been there i've been in entertainment for over 40 years. You know what I mean? I don't have to prove myself to anybody. <laughs> well, the you thing know? is, is you could be on top of the world one day yeah. and you could be knocked off that throne the next day. Uh-huh. So fame can go like that. That's right. You have to be able to handle the peaks and the valleys. And, uh, you know, that's why I'm so well versed in business as much as I am with entertainment, because mm-hmm. you need to be able to handle any of those valleys. I also happen to do so many different things that I try to keep my valleys as short as humanly possible. You know what I mean? Because I've got other things happening. I have a bunch of different brimstone product out in the world, you know, and in market. I've got, you know, different uh, avenues of, uh, of income. I've got appearances. I've got, you know, the Grindhouse Radio Inc. I've got Hound Comics Inc. Entertainment Group. I've got, you know what I mean? So I do my yeah. foodie stuff. You know what I mean? So I've got all that going on. There's a lot of different outlets that i have working for me um most people don't necessarily have that you know so you know um so a a valley for them it's like oh my god what do i do you know um one of my best uh pieces of advice for anybody that's in entertainment um or or you know listen make sure you understand business be entrepreneurial Mm -hmm. I'm a very, I'm a serial entrepreneur. You know what I mean? Um, So, you know, one of my big sayings and one of my big things is entertainers are entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs should be entertaining. You know what I mean? And this is how life is. This is, this is a hundred percent, 200 percent true. Okay. You, you, if you're in entertainment, you are a, you are 200% an entrepreneur. You are handling your own business because if you're not out there working, 
you are not going to be successful. It's not going to happen. Okay. Same thing for business and entrepreneurs. You know, if you're out there and you're trying to hustle and you're working, but you're very drab and nobody wants to hear this. And I'm talking, you know what I'm saying? Like, then you're not going to be anywhere. So you need to be That's entertaining. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's a very big, um, you know, uh, um, the two, those two things uh, are very linked together. And, um, you know, I've, I've pushed that for a while and, and, you know, some people have caught on and they, they understand it's true, you know, like um, entertainers, you know, if you're not, you know, business savvy, you're going to get screwed on a lot of things. You're going to get screwed on contracts. You're going to get screwed on deals. You're going to get screwed on, on money. Uh, you're going to get screwed on, on, um, you know, expenses, you, you, whatever it is, well, that's money too, but what, you know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. there's so many different you. things that you're going to have an issue with. Um, you know, you've got to understand trademarks. You've got to understand common law trademark. You've got to understand, you know, um, certain things in contracts. You need to understand when you're doing appearances, travel, lodging, per diem, what this is, what that is, how much the going rate is, what you're worth, what you're valued at, yada, 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 yada. There are so many things that are involved. Yeah, you have an agent, but guess what? Those agents, sometimes they're great, sometimes they're not. Hell, there are some child actors that worked out there that their parents stole their freaking money. Yep. Let's talk Britney Spears for a hot. I was going to say the same thing. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know, you need to be educated. Educate yourself. So this way you are not taken advantage of um and listen over the years i've built businesses up and i had been screwed you know what i mean by some be, because i trusted someone that i shouldn't have trusted my biggest mistakes yeah. throughout history of is because i care too much about people and i trust people too much and um you know and and i'm i'm always trying to help people uh and give them opportunity so that's that has been my biggest weakness. Not no longer. I mean, that's not my style anymore. But um, what do you call? It? But over the the last X amount of years, that was my biggest weakness. That was the biggest fault that I had. Is I gave too much of a crap about other people, and I trusted too much. Um, and that is always where my failures came from. So I learned from it. You know what I mean? I learned from it, and now I know. Guess what? This is not gonna. This is not going to happen anymore. You know what I mean? I'm not going to give this. I'm not going to do that. I my contracts are perfect at this point. You know what I mean? Whether I do them or whether my attorney does them doesn't matter. I always recheck and check three times. You know what I mean? Because I'm used to everything now and I've learned what's right, what's wrong. Hell, I did a 30-page cease and desist that, that needed to be done at one point about five, six, seven. No, no, it's like eight years ago at this point now. A 30-page cease and desist and did all the legalese on my own and then handed it to an attorney to just review. And they said, who'd you have write this up? This is impeccable. I said, I did it. They, what is I did it, <laughs> you know? And they're like, this is fantastic. I don't need to make any changes. And that was that, what do you call it? Um, so when you take it upon yourself and you learn and you, you, and I don't know everything, but you know, if I don't know it, I will go and look it up and try to learn it. So it's very important to just be smart. Be a smart filler, not a fox yeah. miller. <laughs> no, you know, man, I wanted to get into the music, but unfortunately we've run out of time. So, um, yeah, it can, can always be another time. my friend. I, I was going to say, if you could come back on another time, man, I'd really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The music, music is another whole story altogether. Loved, 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 loved. That was my first love was music drumming. Um, what do you call it? Matter of fact, uh, and, and I'll just say it quick because we spoke about it in this conversation and um, what do you call it? Two of, two of my heroes that I was able to, and I'm very, I'm close with all of my, my drumming heroes at this point. Anybody that I was looked that I loved growing up are my friends at this point or an acquaintance at this point. Um, and Rod Morgenstein, who's from Winger and the Dixie Dregs and stuff. One of my, one of my favorite drummers in the world, one of the sweetest guys in the world. Um, the first time that we actually went out and, and broke bread together, how humble and sweet and just dear he was in terms of, he was asking questions about me and my career and curious about just life in general. 
rather than sitting and talking about all the achievements, you know what I mean, that he's had and how, you know, and it was just such a like, wow, this is fantastic. And I'm like, but I want to hear about your stuff. Um, and the same thing, you know, goes for like, you know, uh, Fred Curry from Cinderella, uh, Jimmy DeAnda from the Bullet Boys. Uh, Bullet Boys was one of the, the most different bands from back when, but one of my favorites, uh, you know, and so Jimmy is a dear friend of mine now. Uh, I got to Tommy, see them. What was that? I got to see the Bullet Boys. Fantastic. They're crazy live. They're fantastic live. Did you see them recently or back when? It was uh, back in the early 2000s. I yeah. thought it was a uh, Victoria's Secret show the way they came out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they're good looking chicks. Uh, what do you call it? Ricky Rocket from Poison. Oh, he's you know, so cool. Great guy. Real he's... quick, can I tell you something real quick about Ricky yeah. Rocket? So I was not a Poison fan in high school. And they had this, uh, uh, it's like a hair metal festival that would come to Houston every year. Mm-hmm. And my little brother had gotten tickets that first year and he ended up getting better seats. And so he offered me the other ones. So I went and I saw him. I'm like, wow, these guys are pretty cool. Well, the, that's later that year, my brother killed himself. And then we kind of decided that was going to be our annual thing to go to the show. Cause it was always yeah. poison. And, um, uh, we ended up getting to go backstage and I met Ricky rocket and I, I told him the, the story about why we started coming to the festival and he came up and gave me the biggest hug mm. and he goes, man, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. And so that's spawned me to be a poison fan after that. He's this very sweet guy and he's very into uh, the paranormal, by the way. He has I know I've been show. trying to get him on for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm waiting because I'm, I'm supposed to jump in on one of his shows uh, when we have the opportunity, when things you know, where travel is a little bit more open, um, which which is starting to get that there. So um, I think I might be having him come down if he's going to be in the area. We might go do Sleepy Hollow together because I'm friendly with them over at Sleepy Hollow. So um, that was one of the things we'd spoken about. I, I can't wait to do that because I um, love him to death and, and he's just a, just a, such a great guy. Um, and what do you call it? And my, my biggest one, the one person that I had wanted to meet um, was Tommy Lee. And uh, what do you call it? And after literal years, things we were even supposed to do with each other, um, you know, contractually things, something always happened. He was like, he became um, the, what do you call it? Our unicorn, my unicorn. Uh, My wife used to laugh at me because she was just like, we were like, it's never going to happen. We're never going to meet this, you know, because he's the one person I wanted to actually meet. I I wanted to, I started drumming and, you know, I idolized him from all the, you know, the, the spinning of the sticks and the, just the showmanship. So um, what do you call it? Uh, long story longer is I, what do you call it? We finally did have the opportunity to meet and it was actually, and, and I was, I was concerned because I'm like, the hype is there. The hype's been there. It's the only time I've ever had hype before meeting somebody and caring. So what do you call it? Uh, and the reason for it is because it was like 15, 20 years of us missing each other for one reason or another you know what i mean yeah. so and now i was like i really hope he's not going to be a jackass that was the thing is and but but i was signing at a uh, at a casino i was signing at a casino and uh and he was doing an appearance at the casino uh in a separate area and the head of security had known my tommy lee story he goes well tommy's gonna be here i'm gonna bring you personally to go and meet him it's like, yeah, okay, whatever. That's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. And uh, sure enough, after a long to do, and I'll tell you about it next time I see you. Sweet. Uh, what do you call it? They, you know, I wound up meeting him, and I'll tell you guys what happened then if you're interested in hearing it. Um, but what he called next time, but I did meet him, and it was a great experience. But I will tell you, um, next time I can tell you the whole story. Well, let, let's set up another time you can come on, hopefully Absolutely. soon. But anyway. Thank you so much for your time. And if you, you me. anybody that out there, um, check out his stuff. If you're interested, that's uh, grindhouse. You said, yeah, yeah. The grindhouse radio.com is the, uh, you know, the official website for the grindhouse radio. We're doing between three and a half, four million listeners weekly worldwide on, uh, you know, on all our outlets. So please definitely check us out there. I also, if you like a little more of the adult stuff, 
um, and it's not all dirty, but I do the Dirty Little Secrets Club uh, with Dana Pereira, um, where we have a really, really good time with that. I do Within Brim Skin with my co-host, Alex DePonte, who's also my lead engineer. And um, what do you call it? Uh, you could get all that stuff on my official website, therealbrimstone.com. Um, I'm also on very active on Instagram at the real brimstone. Please hit me up there and everywhere else, but you can get that all on my official site. And if you're interested in checking it out, my bio, all that stuff, it's all on my site. There's more stuff to look on there than um, I'm sure you want to see. So, uh, <laughs> and my music stuff, a lot of my music stuff is there. So you can hear and listen to old stuff if you're interested in the music. Thank you. And for those of you that are new to the channel, uh, thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe and come back. And for those of you who are regular to the channel, thank you for your support. And so until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network.